Hi, I'm Marty with TurboSmart USA. We're here at PRI 2019 in the TurboSmart booth. We unveiled and basically announced to the public that we are manufacturing electronic wastegates. These wastegates are now operated by the ECU. No more boost reference, no more springs, no more diaphragms, direct control. The response was phenomenal. Uh, we won Best New Performance Racing Product at SEMA. We also won five global media awards from the press. So to say that it was really good would be an understatement. I, can't, I cannot describe how good SEMA was for us. Our office's phones were ringing off the hook. We literally didn't get through the first day without, I, I can't even tell you how many inquiries. Uh, second day of the show, most every ECU manufacturer was lined up at our booth wanting more information and they started publicly announcing their support for the product. So for, for me, for our company, that, that response, that validation is, is incredibly exciting and, and rewarding. I mean, we feel really good about it and it hasn't stopped. So it's just constant, when can I get one? Um, I want some to do some development work. I've got a new program for next year. I need this right now. Um, ECU manufacturer response, incredible. Haltech's got one operating on their booth here at PRI. I would say within the next three to four months, every major ECU manufacturer will directly support this product. Um, it's been phenomenal. I've, we literally have had no negative feedback from any ECU manufacturer or racer. Because we can't control what our products end up on, so we have to kind of overbuild our products and we have to be ultra conservative in what we say. Bottom line, so when we're designing it, we design it for worst case scenario or we pick a very high target. So for these products, we just chose a drive pressure, a back pressure, exhaust back pressure of about 80 PSI. We've gone higher, so okay, great. We need to be able to drive this gate close against that force, right? And if we do that, we will cover the vast majority of the people that will be using this. So in that scenario, with a 60 millimeter valve face, the peak we've seen, the worst we've seen is 18 amps. We say you need 20 amps, so your output needs to cover 20 amps to give it a little headroom. But at the end of the day, the real operation is between eight and 12. And there, believe it or not, there's quite a few ECU manufacturers can already support that. And if they can't, we're working on a little black box, so are other people. Um, but I mean, even in our, our shop cars, we have an off the shelf ECU running it. There's no magic or anything else required. It's running it directly. The new Haltech ECU is running it directly. It, it's not as difficult as it may seem. Some people get a little scared, but no, we, we've, we've been very careful. And trust me, during the development of the product, it was a lot more. And we like, no, that's too much. Keep working on it. And in the design of the product, we've got it to what we believe is an acceptable level. And the ECU manufacturers have also said, yeah, we can do that. And if we can't, next gen will. So um, yeah, that's, it's really not an issue that, you know, is a concern. Well, there is no back drive. So up to 300 PSI, if this valve is sitting still, it's not consuming any current, right? The, the gearbox we have designed in it, what have you, it's only using current when it needs to move the valve and do something. And if it's holding it steady, there is no current draw. I'd say operational is very similar, but other than that, again, when you think about OEs and they're building their vehicles, right, they build a fantastic vehicle and it's for a certain demographic or an operation. So there's a lot of plastics and lower cost materials used. Um, and because of that, even the motors, they're not, they're not very strong. They get the job done, but that car is maybe only making one bar of boost, right? Again, we've, we've built these products to handle 80. So it's far more robust, it's, it's much stronger, and it's much more durable than anything that the OEs are currently manufacturing. We've tested that, we've used that to you know, get our head around what, what are we going to do to solve some of these issues? These products are for you know the higher end motorsport racing type guys or guys that are really you know cranking up their cars like your car, right? And you need you know that level of control and that durability, uh, which the OE actuators just aren't going to do for you. It, it can't handle it. I think the demand's been leading up. So one of the biggest responses we've received is it's about time someone's done this, and why didn't you do this sooner? And the, and the short answer is because it's hard. This isn't easy. This product has been in the works. We've been working on this for a very long time. And I'd say in the last year, we've had dedicated engineers full time only working on this product. I think the timing, to be honest, was perfect. If we didn't finally release it and unveil it, get all of our patent paperwork handled now, someone else would have beat us. Um, so it was, it was the right time. It was almost magical how it worked out. So it's great. It's great for the entire industry. It's great for motorsport. It's great for our company. Um,
again, I, I couldn't be more excited. It's a great time. Even to this day, we're still exploring the possibilities. <laughs> Predictive boost control literally is only limited by your imagination and I guess your capability to program your ECU to tell it what to do. Traction control, boost by corner, Pike's Peak, elevation changes. It's not going to be affected, man. I want this much shaft speed of that turbo the whole time, and it's going to make sure that. Ha Trust me, this this keeps me up at night. It's 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 incredibly exciting, um, and I would say we've done a bit more than scratch the surface, but there's still a lot more to come. Testing's done. They're in production now. The 60 mil is in production now. Um, we do have a few partners that, you know various racers that push things to the absolute limit that we will probably have on their cars first to do it like you said public testing and really you know just take it to its limit type testing before they're shipping um, but again we've overbuilt it and they're, they're it's pretty much ready i would say the only change may be in some additional feedback features or something that we're currently doing that we're not sure if the market is willing to pay for maybe or ready for um, so there may be another generation that has a bit more, you know, technology or sensors feedback in them. But other than that, um, yeah, we, the go button's been hit and it's in production. So um, I'd say they're going to be on the shelf sooner rather than later. And um, the, so a couple of well-known guys will be making some big noise real soon. Um, this is Larry Larson's car, um, Larson race car. He, he's a, a race car builder, right? So you can imagine he's going to build a car for himself personally. He's going to make sure it's it's special. Larry wanted to do something a bit different. It's a Cadillac ATSV. It's the only one I know of that's even drag racing, period. And definitely the only one with 4,000 Pro-Line horsepower, right? Controlled by TurboSmart. Um, some key things about it is, from here back, it's original. It's steel. The doors are the real doors. So a typical race car will have carbon fiber doors and you open them and they're kind of flimsy and the thing rattles and shakes. There's nothing wrong with that, right? It's a lightweight race car, but he wanted to build a real car. And so you open and shut the door. The, the, the weather seals are still in it. The door seals are, it's solid, it's crisp, it's clean. Um, uh, the front end's over there, obviously it's carbon fiber. The technology that he's done to actually put the front end on and off, no one has anything like it. It's an incredible car, and um, and he's a great guy. We just love to have a beautiful, fresh car on our stand every year, and um, he's a great guy to have. These guys are our partners, right? Um, so the first guy up is Ryan Martin. He drives a Fireball Camaro. He's this year's champion from No Prep Kings, Street Outlaws competitor. Again, beautiful cars. He's been running Turbo Smart products for years, probably longer than anybody on that show. And there's no denying, he's a winner, right? And, you know, he tells us, like, our products help him win. Um, so that's nice. So he's up first. We've got Mike Morello. He's been a TurboSmart brand ambassador for over 12 years. Obviously, Larry Larson will be signing autographs as well. Um, Eric Bain, that drives the Boosted Ego car, will be here. Um, Joe Woods, Dominator, will be here as well. Just hanging out and talking to people.